Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. I am happy to be here for another episode of Spirituality Sundays. This is a series where I'm talking about all of the deeper issues in life from subjects related to mental health, human psychology, spirituality and so much more. This week I had a decision to make. It wasn't a big decision, in fact it was a really small decision, one that most of us wouldn't think twice about. But there I was thinking twice over whether I should do something or not do something. In fact, I was overthinking it that much that it was causing me a lot of mental strain and anxiety over the smallest thing. Seemed kind of silly, but what I have learned is that every feeling, emotion and behaviour is valid. There is always a reason behind it, even if we are totally unaware as to what that is. I asked, why am I doing this to myself? What is the worst that can happen, really? I pondered for a while and carried on with what I was doing, and then suddenly it came to me. A flashback to my teenage years. I felt that pain that I felt all those years ago. My eyes started to well up. Fear, upset, rejection. There it was. Instead of trying to shut it out and push it to the back of my mind, I instead allowed myself to experience it fully, without judgement of any feelings that came up. I remembered how I'd experienced a lot of rejection earlier on in life, the same patterns repeating themselves again and again because I didn't really know how to cope with it at the time or even that I was stuck in a cycle, a continuous loop because of my own belief system and ways of thinking. And these early events, although mostly pushed into my subconscious, still haunt me to this day. However, with my new state of awareness, I made a decision. I'm not going to let this past pain hurt me anymore. It's time to heal those wounds and create a better future. Just because something happened in the past doesn't mean that it has to continue to play out in the future. It's important to understand that we all have defence mechanisms, which we built whether we were aware of it or not. We did this to stop us from reliving trauma we may have experienced in the past. Sometimes it can just be events that we perceived as being traumatising. A little bit like if we get a cut, our body forms scar tissues to prevent the likelihood of us getting hurt there again. Just as we form physical scars, we also form emotional scars. Emotional scars are there to protect our identity or ego from future threats or anything that we perceive to be a threat. Although this may be evolutionary advantageous, it can also hold us back from experiencing the world, achieving our goals, forming relationships with others, and it can generally cause a lot of worry, stress, anxiety and unease, which has certainly been the case in my life. These emotional scars can also affect our self-image and we may begin to see ourselves in a negative way, as somebody who is unlovable and not accepted by others. This can prevent us from fully living. The first step to healing is awareness and acceptance, and as I've already mentioned, allowing ourselves to feel those emotions that we may have shut out in the past. Notice any thoughts that emerge, but don't judge yourself. It can be helpful to write down our thoughts and feelings, or express them verbally, even if just to ourself. As somebody who is often alone, I do this a lot. Then we can begin to look at the situation and find ways to feel differently about it. Can we attach a more positive thought or feeling to the event? If it helps, step into someone else's shoes, such as a close friend or family member, and ask yourself how you would see things from their point of view. For example, what I may have perceived as being rejected by another person, someone else might look at that experience and see it as shyness. I know there were certainly times in my life where I've unintentionally rejected someone else, not because I didn't want to talk to them, but because I was simply too scared to. There are a huge number of explanations as to why certain things happen. Sometimes it's just about looking at things from a new perspective. Also, sometimes our mood can affect how we perceive situations. There have been times where somebody else has said something to me, which was a fairly neutral comment, but I've reacted in a negative way, maybe angrily or upset, just because I was in a bad mood that day. Whereas on a different day, where maybe I was feeling happier and more upbeat and they'd said exactly the same thing to me, I probably wouldn't have thought anything of it and just laughed it off. 
this is something to be aware of. Relax and don't let your current mood cloud how you see the world. Another way in which we can prevent our past from causing us further pain is to take responsibility for our life. Rather than playing the victim role and always emotionally depending on others which can make us very susceptible to being hurt, we can be the person who stands up and takes accountability for their life. Don't give away your personal power to other people and circumstances. Be the one who chooses what they want to experience in life and act upon it. Instead of being defensive and closed off towards others, give everyone you meet your love, respect and understanding and in time you will begin to get the same back. Learn to forgive others who may have hurt you in the past and most importantly, forgive yourself. Feeling regretful and guilty about the past will not change things and will only keep us stuck there. We all make mistakes and this doesn't mean that any of us are bad people, we are just human. Let go of what is no longer serving you. The final point that I want to cover is self-esteem. We all know people that are easily offended and others who don't seem to be affected at all by anything anybody else says or does. This all comes from having a healthy self-esteem. If we feel insecure and doubt our own self-worth, we leave ourselves open to threats and may believe that we deserve to be treated in a certain way. However, the person who feels confident and happy in who they are will not be as affected by threats to their ego or self-image. There are lots of ways in which we can build up our self-esteem and I will cover some of these techniques in future videos, but it all starts with self-acceptance. Although I've talked a lot here about building a thicker skin and changing our perception of the past, I also want to note that Sometimes we just need to allow ourselves to be a little bit more vulnerable and risk that emotional hurt. If we want to truly give and receive love, we must open ourselves up to it. Yes, we've all been through difficult and painful experiences in the past, but did it kill us? No, because we're standing here talking about it right now. And most likely, it made us a stronger person for having those experiences. Remind yourself that you are much braver than you think and everything that you went through in the past made you the person you are today. Healing our past will help open us up to life once again, to be fearless and go after what we want, just like we did as children. So start this journey today. Thank you so much for watching this video. I really do hope it was helpful. If you have any questions or would like to share any of your own experiences, please do drop them in the comments below or come and say hello to me over on Instagram. I'll see you next time. Bye.